So far in our Hardcore 119 world, we've made a bridge, a house, and a great big mess over here by the iron farm. And today, we're going to fix that. But that's just one of many things we're going to be getting up to in today's episode. In fact, I'm going to tick one of those things off right away. I mean, look at this. Look at all these frogs. I mean, I've clearly made a terrible mistake with the breeding, and now they're overrunning the place. What's wrong with my lake? And more importantly, what are these two fellas doing all the way out here? Look at that. They're miles away. Where are they off to? Maybe I do just need to improve the lake a little bit for them. I'm sure that's definitely going to help with the frog problem. Next up, we have a sheep to go rescue. And there they are. Our lovely pink sheep that we found in the first episode has been just sitting here, waiting for us to come and collect them. And now we actually have a home to keep them in. I think it's only fair that we retrieve them. Welcome to your new home, which for now is actually just going to be stuck in the boat, I'm afraid. I know, I know, but it's okay. We'll eventually have somewhere to put the sheep, but for now, I think we're pretty much done procrastinating. So last episode, we got this foundation down and we discussed what we were going to be building here, the big fort and so on, and I've completely changed my mind. We're not going to do that anymore. We're still going to make use of the platform we've got here, but I've had a slight change of heart. I've been messing around a little bit in creative to try and get some ideas because I was struggling to actually picture the fort once I got this base up. So what we're actually going to do is to build a giant tavern. Yep, we're going to build an oceanside tavern. And I've got an idea of what it's going to look Look like as i say i have been messing around a tiny bit in creative i've designed just a couple of little bits to get the color palette right and we are going to need a whole bunch of resources the problem is our tools are not very good at the moment we don't have efficiency and everything takes a long time to gather so before we can go on a massive resource gathering mission i need to upgrade my tools and to do that i need levels we've got 28 we don't quite have the 30 we need but when we do get to 30 look at this the table already has an efficiency force sitting there waiting for me i just need an extra couple of levels Levels. But then after that, we're going to need a whole bunch more levels, of course, because I do want to upgrade the rest of my gear. And it'd be quite nice to get some feather falling on my boots as well. It's a big build. So I have done a little bit of digging. I've gathered a little bit of cobble and some deep slate, and that's what made me realise I really needed to upgrade my tools. And while we were doing that, we came across this, which is, of course, a spawning dungeon. And not only that, it actually has a geode attached to it as well, which is going to be very handy, because I can do with a little bit of basalt. And it's also what enabled me to make this. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn this zombie spawner into an early game XP farm. So we're going to have to do a little bit of clearing. It shouldn't be too difficult to do. Although, well, me being me, I've got to make it look nice as well, haven't I? First thing I need to do is to clear out the area around the spawner. Much better. I've dug out the area four blocks each side and four blocks down, and we've also just put a hole in the middle, which is where we're going to feed all the zombies into. You may notice I've also replaced all the walls as well. It doesn't look particularly fancy, but this is just so that if I'm doing any other work around here, I don't accidentally dig into the spawner, because that would be a bad thing. Currently, the zombies are going to get washed into this hole here, then they'll get pushed over to the side, they'll go across this tunnel, and then they're going to go into a bubble vator. So the next step is going to be getting that bubble vator in place, and I think we're just going to send them up a little bit higher over here. Ideally, what we want to do is send them up approximately 23 blocks from here, across, and then down into a kill chamber. And that way, they should be one-hit kills, which especially at the start when we don't have a sweeping edge sword, should be a little bit easier. There we go. A simple bubble vator has been installed. The zombies now go up to the top, across, and when they drop down here, they become one-hit kills. And of course, we get to gather all the XP. I've also set this up on top of the hopper, so we are collecting some bits and bobs. I mean, yeah, we're probably just going to burning all that, to be perfectly honest. We only really want the experience. And if we quickly switch to replay mod, we can actually look inside the walls and see how this thing is working. And as you can see, the zombies spawn on the right-hand side. They drop down into the water tunnels, and then they just jostle around in this area here for a bit. And then eventually they get pushed into the bubble vator, 
and then drop down for me to kill. So the last thing I want to do is to make this place look a little bit nicer. We're going to be spending some time here while we get our levels and it might even be worth moving our enchanting table down here as well because ultimately that's what we want the levels for. Lots and lots of enchanting. So I'm going to leave this running while I do so and that means I can gather levels while I'm also trying to make it look good and I'll bring you back in once this room's looking a little bit nicer and hopefully we're a little bit more enchanted. Yay, efficiency four. Ooh, and I'm breaking. Lovely jubbly. I have been here for so long and I still don't have feather falling. But the rest of my tools are looking good and so is the rest of this room. We've made it look nice, I've not done anything too fancy, just tried to use some of the bits from the geode and other materials we found pretty much directly in this area. Even the jungle wood, we ripped off the top of the island upstairs. So we have another enchanting setup down here, this is actually separate to the one we have upstairs and I've put a bed in here as well, just so I can sleep before I leave, just in case. And this door here just goes back out into the mines. But I've been standing here killing zombies for hours, literally probably about three or four hours. What day are we even on now? So we're on day 182. That's, yeah, we've been here for quite a while. And to say we've killed more than a couple of zombies is a bit of an understatement. Let's have a look. We have killed 1,204 zombies already. Okay, that's actually more than I thought. But I just need these precious, precious levels. So I'm going to stay here a little bit longer. And once we get Feather Falling 4, we can move on to the next step of preparation, which is to go and mess with the villagers. Because we're going to need mending on these things as well. Although if this is the method of us mending them, we could be in trouble. It's another few hundred zombies later, and I still don't have exactly what I needed. I do not have Feather Falling 4 on my boots. But while I've been trying to get that, I have managed to get Protection 4 on basically everything now. In fact, in fact, I do have it on everything. I just don't have all the other enchants and things that I would also like. And my sword is no longer enchanted. I kind of broke the one I had. The most important thing though is we do have tools that all have efficiency, which means our resource gathering is going to be a lot quicker. Although now I need to go get mending for them all, and that means we need to go play with some villagers. So I've got three lectins in the hope that we can get feather falling, mending, and well, something else. Something else always comes out and then you end up going, oh, it's a really good price, I'm going to keep it, and it's not the thing I was going for. So that's why we've got the extra lectin. But I've also got a bunch of barrels and loads of wood so that we can make ourselves some fletchers and actually get some emeralds just by selling them sticks. And the weather is absolutely awful. Blah. Oh, feather falling four. That was like attempt number five. You legends. So I do need to lock him in, which means we're also going to need a fisherman. I guess that's you. What's wrong with the barrel? Why you, Why do you not like the barrel? Okay, no, he just didn't like the first barrel. Wait a minute, it's not barrels I need. It's, it's not barrels at all. I need, I need fletching tables. Oh dear. Let's try this again. There we go, now he buys sticks. That's what we wanted. Hmm, we need more fletchers. You sir, be a fletcher. Thank you. And you sir. So now we can buy our feather falling from this dude. Excellent. Although we are going to need another librarian, which means we're probably going to need to put some beds in here and get a couple of babies. We've got a couple of babies in there now. We've got a whole bunch of emeralds from trading sticks. We just need to wait for them to grow up so we can get a couple more librarians. I may have made one or too many fletchers up there. Our first baby's finally grown up. Let's give him a job and see what we can get. Mending, preferably. Ooh, silk touch. You see, this is what I was saying. Sometimes you just come across another book and you're like, well, that's going to be really handy as well. And to be honest, I could really do with that. Fine, we'll lock you in. But the next one must, must, must be a mending villager. Okay? Wow, that's an expensive mending. 30, 38. I'll tell you what, I'm, not, I'm actually going to keep rolling. I'm not paying 38 for mending. There we go, 26 mending. That's more like it. Let's buy as many of those as we can. And with that, I think we've got all the books we need, and hopefully I've actually got enough levels to put these on. Feather falling on my boots, finally. Well, we've only got four levels left, but look at that. We have mending on all of our tools, and we will, of course, need to save up and get some more mending books. And I also want to make sure that I can put Silk Touch on my axe at some point in future as well. So for this build, there's a number of different resources we're going to need, and I think it's a good idea for me to put down a bunch of barrels here. And let's work this out. So we're going to need some dark oak, which will be stripped. We're going to need jungle. We're going to need mangrove. We're going to need oak. And we're going to need spruce. 
That's a lot of different wood types for a start. We're also going to need mud and dirt, and of course, a little bit more netherrack, because we are going to be doing a mangrove roof in certain places. So this is the key things that we need. I would also like to get some brown mushrooms as well, but I don't actually have any at all at the moment. And that's also the reason I wanted silk touch on my axe, which I don't currently have, because I don't have the levels to make another axe, put silk touch on it, and then merge them. But we'll get there. So I'm about to spend hours and hours resource gathering. I imagine you're just going to see like a 20 second time lapse of it all. Well, it's quite a bit later, but I think I have pretty much everything I need. We just did a stream, we chopped lots of wood, we went and explored and actually got ourselves some mud from the mangrove swamp. And you may notice I've planted a bit of bamboo there as well, and that's because we actually need a tiny bit of scaffolding for this build as well. But for the most part, we should have pretty much everything we need, and I'm going to make a start. I think it makes sense to probably sort out the iron farm area first, although something I do have to consider, of course, is that while I'm building this, golems could well spawn on the blocks that I'm placing. Obviously, I will completely spawn proof it once I'm done, but that could cause problems and actually break the farm, so it might be worth actually taking a little bit of time to turn the farm off, which should hopefully be easy enough. In fact, in theory, if I just pillar up here, break this block here, and then if I time this right... There we go. And he can just sit in there and wobble, and that should actually stop the golems from spawning while we work on the build here. So I think I am going to build the tower that goes around the iron farm first, so let's start by placing some blocks here. I need to strip them as I go as well, and I guess you're going to get a very fast time lapse, and we'll bring you back in once we're looking a bit better. basic shape is in. This wall is extremely bland, but don't worry about that. That's going to end up inside the rest of the building anyway. But I think shape-wise, this is coming along quite well. For now, I think the next step is to expand the front here and actually start getting the main part of the building down. severely underestimated the amount of oak I'm going to need for this build. Although it is coming along well, I have just completely run out and we've still got another three walls to do on this main central building here. But hopefully this gives you an idea of the scale of this thing and it is absolutely huge. That's enough cheesy 80s music for now. So this has taken me absolutely forever, and as you can see, I've still got a lot of work to do. There's absolutely no texturing anywhere on the building, and, uh, well, there's no windows either. It's quite dark inside there, but the general shape of it, I think I am actually happy with. I think that's looking pretty good. Although I've got to be honest, it is quite hard to actually gauge it properly from down here, and that is why I've installed FreeCam mod. And now we can actually just press F4. We're still here. We're still in the game. It just allows us to essentially detach from our body and that's a really good thing when you're doing big builds like this because it gives you a better view especially when you don't have wings but the general shape of this i am very happy with but yeah needs a lot of detail i did put a little bit of detail on the tower here but the rest of it is still lacking and then we're going to have gardens around the back here and so on but well, that's going to have to wait because i think i need an adventure we have a rescue mission to attend to when we were on stream the other day we were exploring and we came across something very, very special. And here it is. And if we look in these cages, you see that? That is our quarry. There's two over there. And I believe there's at least one. There's two over there as well. Look at that. So we need to get in there. We need to save those guys. And we need to not die while doing so. Let's go. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, a goat horn. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
That was pretty straightforward, actually. We've successfully made it away with four LAs, and most importantly, we also got an awesome goat horn. But they're not the easiest to transport. I do find myself constantly looking over my shoulder because occasionally you just get a little bit too far away from them in a boat. But in general, I'm loving having a horde. What are you doing? You weirdos. What are you doing? As the sun has gone down, we've actually made it home with all four LAs, which is marvellous. Although I don't actually have anywhere to store them at the moment, so we're going to have to put them on leads. And I've got two on me, and I think I have another two in here. Let's have a quick look. Yep, we have got absolutely loads of leads. So let's just, um, a bit, little bit mean, I know, a little bit mean, but let's just tie them to a post for now. And we'll just let them hang out, I guess. In fact, let's, uh, let's take the chicken off them as well so they can be free. Be free, kind of, still tied to a post, but at least you're not burdened with chicken. Anyway, it's dark and I'm scared. Let's go to bed. So the good news is now we have a laze when it comes to doing the texturing over here, when blocks are going to be flying absolutely everywhere, we can actually use these little dudes to pick up all the excess for us and bring them back to us so we're going to lose a lot less blocks which means next episode we can actually spend a bit less time chopping but i hope you have enjoyed it today and i'll catch you all on the next one bye bye now i mean it might not be finished but at least the iron farm's hidden